you're in the process of buying a house and you're already in contract, you already put the down payment on the home and you're having second thoughts, this video is for you. Stay here, don't scroll. And I will share with you three different ways that you're going to cancel your contract. But most importantly, what happens with your money? What happens with the down payment for the house, for the home that you already put? And the seller's attorney is the one who has your money. So I'll give you three different scenarios and we'll tackle each one and let you know what's going to happen to your down payment money. The first scenario where you can cancel your contract is simply get a mortgage denial. The mortgage denial is something that's already in your contract. If you were purchasing a home with a mortgage, you have a mortgage contingency, so that protects you but you do have to be unqualified for a mortgage. Assuming also that you were honest and truthful when you applied for a loan and when you signed the contract and presented your pre-approval. So assuming all of these things were not fraudulent, then that mortgage denial letter specifically is going to say that you are not qualified for the mortgage which is a very possible scenario these days because you might have gotten a pre-approval when mortgage rates were at six between six and seven percent currently while you're still in the process of the purchase you now the interest rates are hovering around eight percent and that may very much bump you out of the qualifications and you will get that mortgage denial and assuming again and you'll get that mortgage denial letter or rejection letter, which at that point will be giving to the seller side, the seller's attorney in this case, and the seller's attorney will cancel the deal and reissue a refund check. You will have some expenses that you won't recuperate. One of them being the home inspection, appraisal fee, any mortgage application fees. So that would be something that you would have to eat but you will get your down payment money returned to you. So that's one way. This actually happened not too long ago, several weeks ago, maybe a month ago, with a client that were buying, that were purchasing a home in New Jersey and everything looked good when we went into the deal. And then towards the end, when it came time, things change, interest rates keep fluctuating that kicked them out of the market. The lender had no choice but to issue the mortgage denial letter. It was submitted to the seller's attorney and seller's attorney issued a check right back to the buyers the next day. So they got their money back. Great. That was easy, right? Probably not the outcome that everybody wanted, but it was easy. Second, way you can cancel a contract is you are just going to cancel the contract you're going to ask your attorney to terminate but what happens to your money in this situation? you have to figure that you are risking not to receive your down payment for a home money that you made part of the contract says that if you as the buyer terminate the agreement terminate the contract and it's by your own choice, like changing your mind about buying a house, then the seller has the right to keep your full deposit to it's to indemnify them for the lost time. Real story again, I had a client, we got not only did we were close to the closing table, we had a clear to close. The client had money with the seller's attorney and the client decided that for this client and everything that's going on, the client decided that it's not a good idea for the client to move ahead with the purchase. When the client evaluated the ability to pay monthly payments and expenses on this property that the client was buying, everything looked good. By the time that we were getting to the clear to close, the payment went up, oh my gosh, it was like $800 more 
than what originally the client thought they will be paying. And after looking at everything, the client said, you know what? I would rather lose that down payment and just walk out of the deal because I don't want to commit to a 30 year loan at such enormous numbers. And I'd rather just lose that part and put myself in a situation where it's going to be stressful. The bank wants their money every month. They don't care as long as you're making the monthly payments, the bank is not going to knock on your door. But as soon as God forbid you start missing monthly payments, then the bank wants their money and they have the right to foreclose and take the house away from you. So it's very difficult in today's time. The interest rates are constantly creeping up. The nothing is the same anymore. You could get your pre-approval today as to a point where you can actually close on the house, which is about a month and a half to three months later, depending if you're buying in New York or in New Jersey. Then what happens is, oh my God, all of a sudden, like I'm not, uh, even if you qualify, right? Even if it doesn't matter to the bank, even if the bank still wants to give you a mortgage and you can still qualify for that loan, you might not want to because you want to have a life too, right? It's not all about just making money to pay the mortgage and what about everything else, right? What about having some good time, right? What about buying food? What about going on a little vacation? What about paying the bills? What about having money for emergencies? So please don't get me wrong. I am not suggesting that you cancel the deal, you cancel the purchase and risk the option of losing your down payment that you made on the home. By all means, no, but I also am not suggesting that if you feel uncomfortable that you are going to move ahead with the purchase just because you don't want to lose the down payment. There's a lot of fear everywhere. The whole world is in trouble, right? The interest rates are going up. Food is going up. Gas is going up. I don't need to tell you, you know that, right? Our living expenses are becoming more challenging to tackle and it's normal to be afraid. It's normal, normal to be hesitant, fearful, saying, oh my gosh, what did I do? But you were probably, when you did that, you have a reason to buy a home, probably very good reason, maybe even multiple reasons. And it's just take a step back. Don't get all rattled up into the fear. Speak to your lender again, say, you know what? I want to go over all my numbers again. I want to go over all my income, all my expenses. I want to know exactly where do I stand financially? And I want to know that I can do this comfortably. I don't want to buy a house and then lose my sleep and my health over worrying over this. Just know this, the lender is not going to lend you the money if they didn't believe. And it's not having a hunch, it's black on white paperwork. If they feel that you can't qualify to pay them back on a regular basis with interest, they will not lend you the money. The point here is I want you to be comfortable. You have to live with this a day in and day out. Home ownership is a great way of building equity for yourself because when you rent, you are still building equity, just not for yourself. You're building equity for the landlord. Yes, the landlord is taking the risk, but the landlord is benefiting. You're paying off their mortgage and it's always a good idea to do your best to pay yourself, to pay yourself. And I always like to say, okay, you take from the left pocket and you put it in the right pocket. So that's really what happens. Yes, the market may change. Yes, prices might go down a little, 
but we're not making an investment that we're going to buy today and sell in a year from now. We're buying a home. So you're planning to stay in this home for, let's say at least a decade. Real estate market is always a cycle. The third way that you will get your down payment on a home money back is when the seller cancels the contract and that happens too, just happened recently, about a week ago, also here in New York on a deal. So what happened is once the buyer had a clear to close, the seller, of course, too late, they should have done it ahead of time, but they asked for their payoff letter from the bank. That's one of the items that's needed for the seller to close. And what happened is the seller realized that they're several tens of thousands of dollars short upside down on their home. In case you don't know what that means, that you owe more money on your mortgage and the expenses that are associated with selling a home to in order to close. And that means that instead of getting money at the closing table as a seller, when you sell, you actually have to come with additional funds, additional money in order to finally get to the closing table because the closing table, everybody has to get paid and the seller gets paid last. Uh, in case you are interested in knowing what a seller closing cost pays for, what items it pays for, I did a video about that. You are welcome to watch that video next. So yeah, in this situation, there's no question about returning your down payment. So the seller's attorney sent over a check to the buyer and the buyer got their money back. Again, the buyer is entitled to their down payment for the home that they put in at contract signing, but there's no obligation to reimburse the buyer for their expenses on home inspection, on the appraisal, any title fees and any attorney's fees. So that's to sum it up as to what happens to your down payment on a home in case the contract of sale is canceled. And I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of good stuff there for you. Very educational and make sure to like this video, ask a question, make a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if there's any questions about anything in more detail and I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. See you soon.